Our guest is here. He's a member of parliament for Kadiani. He is the deputy a minority leader in the National Assembly of this Republic of ours called Kenya. His name is Robert Bui. He's here again for uh, a conversation. Good morning, Mwishmua. M- morning. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Uh-huh. Yes. It's good to see you. Yeah, thanks. I'm here. Yeah. Uh, Mafriko I crazy. Crazy. It's been... Uh, was Kathiani affected? Yes, it was. It was uh, the lower part of the constituency. Mm. Uh, fortunately, half the constituency in Milima. Yeah. Na, so the, 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 the hilly area, the hilly area is not as bad as the, as 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 the lower lands, mm. uh, because of uh, you know there is quite a number of people who lost their homes. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 been tough. It's been quite tough on mm. our people. Mm. But I think it's across the board because everywhere in the country, it was bad. Uh, was 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 crazy. It was bad. Uh, welcome, welcome to the show, City. Welcome, Mwishmiwa with the day's proverb. Yes, our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the Republic of Malawi. Mm-hmm. Okay. Today's proverb. The rivers... No, it's actually the elders. The elders are the rivers where fires are extinguished. The fires? <laughs> are the rivers... <laughs> <laughs> so, again, the, the elders... The elders are the rivers where fires are extinguished. Well, what's your interpretation of this one? Uh, maybe, maybe the when you rivers. What do you mean, rivers? Rivers, rivers, Muto. rivers, Muto. 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 Yeah. rivers. Re- so the rivers. elders uh, are the are rivers, rivers where fires, where fires are extinguished. extinguished. Yes. Well, I guess it just means that uh, once people are mature, then they are able to, you know, to 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 put off small fires to to give the right direction. Mm. Yes. Oh. Uh, to resolve issues. And to resolve issues. Yes. Mm. Uh, mm. When you have elders yes. who are mature enough, oh yes, yes. Uh-huh. who can identify what a fire is, yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> it begins with that. You if can you can have elders who, <laughs> whose task is to light fires. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that the, I think that the proverb kind of implies yeah. that uh, there will be less fires lit by the elders, maybe more fires lit by the younger ones. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. And then it will be incumbent upon the elders now to continuously keep pouring yes. the rivers of water to just douse the fires. Oh con- yes, con- con- constantly just put up the fires. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Much more. It's been a you know, it's, I don't know whether I call it busy. Okay, of course, it's the National Assembly from the committees to everything else. It's busy. You're in the leadership of the National Assembly. Now we're in the season where we are at uh, budget. So we'll discuss that shortly. Yes. But we were treated to some drama just the other day on an issue of impeachment of a cabinet secretary. And you are among those that were in the 11 member team that sat to listen and interrogate this matter in detail. And then it came out of people like, ah like we expected anything better <laughs> like uh, i mean what did you expect did you actually expect that this guy was going oh, come on did you get that from the people from the moment the member of parliament brought this to the house to the moment the speaker said all right it meets the threshold to the moment members of parliament voted to actually accept this um, uh, motion for impeachment to the moment a committee was established did you hear people telling you ah kuna kazi i think i think uh, for the first time i uh, were very optimistic mm. when when it started we were of the opinion that uh, for once parliament has stood up with the people and defended the people because uh, you see, there are several things that happened. First, the motion was passed by the by the speaker. Yep. He could have, um, you know, as an apologist of the other side, he could have also <laughs> used his powers to to to, to deny the, 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 the member the opportunity to, mm. to extinguish the fire. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a member who was seeking to extinguish a fire. Mm. <laughs> so so he, he could have he could have blocked it. So when 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 he allowed the motion and then we got uh, the signatures of about 110 members many of whom were drawn from the from the side Majority. of the ruling party. Mm. That that pointed out at a parliament that was now, you know, properly properly uh, uh, ready to carry out its roles. And uh, when now the voting took place, I was shocked because I mean 149 members, and and for your information, there are very many more that voted, but their votes didn't count because mm. the machines had a problem. I personally, if you noticed, you didn't see my vote. Mm. 
But, but I was house. among the last people to make a contribution. So I was seated right there. Right. I had my card and I attempted. So when we drew the speaker's attention to the fact that we didn't vote, he said, you know, you've already achieved the threshold. Mm. Because it's already 149 members versus, I think, 30-something. Mm. And, and the threshold to for that vote required about 120 thereabouts. So it was already, in, uh, to, uh, I think, 127 or something. Mm. So it was already way beyond the threshold. So mm. he, he said there's no... There's no need to belabor the point. Uh, this is a done deal. He announced the results as they were. Right. So many, many more members than 149 voted in support of this motion. Mm -hmm. Now, um, so, so, so at that point, I was, I was, I was very optimistic. And I said, wow, this is excellent. Right. For the first time, parliament has stood to be counted. And members of parliament have crossed ranks and come together mm. on a matter of national importance. Because... Mm. The issue of uh, was this fake fertilizer, mm. and farmers have complained. I mean, uh, people people are losing uh, their they will lose their crop. Many people lose their crop. Mm. So we thought, well, this is a, this is a perfect opportunity now for the first time we will get rid of a person who we be believe is not performing, uh, you know, his his his, his services as expected. Yeah. But then now, of course, now the article in the Constitution uh, requires that uh, you put together an 11-member committee. And I think that's one thing we may need to consider mm. going forward to amend. Because I, I, I believe it should be that once the House votes, it is taken to the President, then maybe he can form a tribunal mm. that can look into the matters, and, but it, takes, it is taken out of the hands of the House. And once a tribunal comes up with its findings, maybe they can be brought back for a final vote. Mm. But you see now, the the way the law is structured is such that after the 11 member committee sits and uh, and, and investigates this matter, yep. when they come up with the findings, now the findings can be twofold. One, they can say that the allegations contained in the motion by the member are substantiated. Mm -hmm. If they are substantiated, then it means this, uh, the, 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 the House now votes again. You see mm. that? To That's make, a, it, to make yes. a final decision. Yes, the to House again this. votes a second and the time. Vo and the House had already voted. And the House has, had already voted. So mm. if you find that these allegations are substantiated, mm. then the House takes a second vote, which is a bit weird. Because mm -hmm. why would you vote, then a committee sits, then you vote again. Mm -hmm. But if you find that the allegations are unsubstantiated, that is now where I underline that. That's where the problem is. <laughs> because yeah. there, is no, there is no more business of the House. It ends there. The CS continues uh, with his Porsche cars in his Porsche office, uh, <laughs> dealing fake fertilizer to the, the rest of the country. The drafters of the constitution <laughs> were actually dealing with an independent arm of government called parliament. Yes. And they were dealing with independent legislators representing their people yes. and performing their roles perfectly as oversight and legislation. And therefore, they anticipated that if parliament says yes let us adopt this motion and parliament forms an 11 member tribunal of its own members then those members will act independently and investigate this matter yes. and then they will actually use all their senses to come and say no we have not met the threshold these are unsubstantiated or you've met the threshold these are substantiated that was the I, I expect that that's what the drafters of the constitution, one of them is in that parliament of yours, called Otiende Amolo, and others. They'll tell you that's what they had in mind. And then now the politics. Uh -huh. So what happened? So, so you know, you know, our, our, our constitution is borrowed from the U.S. Mm. And uh, in the U.S. they do carry out those investigations and, uh, you know, come up with a logical conclusion. Mm. Now we had 10 days mm. to make this decision. Now, are the, you, you know, the the constitution gives uh, parliamentary select committees the powers of a high court. So yeah. basically you have what we call quasi-judicial powers, mm. meaning that you're still a, a, a committee of the house, but you can also apply uh, the judicial, you know, judicial uh, terms mm. when dealing with the matter. <clears throat> but more importantly, <clears throat> you don't cease to, to, to be a parliamentary committee. You don't cease to have the powers of uh, oversight and the powers of uh, you know of of making sure that you represent your people right when we go to the committee the first mistake that occurred is that uh, the the 11 members that were uh, i think put in there uh, virtually to save the cs mm. because that's what happened i mean if you look at the composition they picked people that they knew these ones will save the cs or not be objective mm. so the first mistake was that uh, they turned this uh, committee into a court. Right. 
So instead of being a quasi-judicial process, it became a judicial process, right. which means the parliamentary element was completely ignored. Now, the standing order, I mean, the, let's, the Constitution allows us to investigate. Mm. Uh, the standing orders allow us to investigate. Mm. And even our own rules allowed us to investigate. I can tell you, we did none of those. The committee sat and for two days only out of the ten, listened to two parties so it became an ad, uh, you call it adversarial um you know Judicious engagement mm. so it became a court case so we sat there as the judges and then we had the 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 the, 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 the plaintiff and the defendant yes the, the sponsor became the plaintiff what is your case and the, and the and the cs became the defendant how do you defend yourself so lawyers argued it out and then we said now we have had enough uh, let's go and write a report and we said why would we uh not do be, go beyond what what uh, what has been done first and foremost there are many many allegations that have not been substantiated mm. by virtue of the fact that there are some certain witnesses that we have not heard from mm. and uh, and our rules the rules of this committee clearly indicated that either the sponsor of the motion or the cs had a right in fact that was rule number six in, mm. the, in the in the document we're using allows us to may, we may allow them to call witnesses or or ask the committee to call for them witnesses mm -hmm. now the sponsor of the motion who's also our colleague had two key witnesses he wanted invited mm. one was a ps for agriculture mm -hmm. i mean and that's common sense if you're trying to impeach if you're impeaching the cs and it's on a matter concerning fertilizer that is being distributed within his ministry mm. the principal assistant would obviously have more information the accounting officer yes mm. accounting officer would have more information to see whether he can help us tie the CS mm. or maybe exonerate the CS. The mm. issue is we, we, we need to hear from him to know whether the CS is really culpable or not. Mm -hmm. And so this committee, in the attempt to cover up, say, no, we cannot invite the, the, the PS. And I ask, why would you not invite the PS yet? He has information that you all of you seated here don't have. And they said, for whatever reason, no, we will not call what them. The, what was the argument? The argument was that, you know, the, C, the CS should have been PS should have been invited by the sponsor of the motion. But our rules were saying that uh, we can invite can on invite. his behalf. Right. And this is a state officer. So chances are that he would be uncomfortable coming. So he would need to be summoned. Because mm. he would not want to come out of, you know, voluntarily. Yes. yes. Yeah. Because he also is also concerned about his relationship with, with his boss. boss. So mm. it was only the committee that could have made him come and Kenyans to hear what exactly happened. So the committee in its wisdom says, no, 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 no. The, the, the chief judge says, no, we cannot have. Members of the six other judges say, no, we cannot have that. This court of law does not allow that, you know. If the sponsor did not bring um, uh, this witness as one of his witnesses from the beginning, we will not allow. Okay. Then... The other, the other witness that was critical was a COO of a company called Kale Chemicals. Mm -hmm. Now, this, uh, this was going to tie the CSO and exonerate him from the issue of gross misconduct. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, there was an allegation mm -hmm. that the CS uh, attempted to influence, uh, using his, his power, mm -hmm. to influence the COO to go and read a statement clearing him all right that was an allegation that was in the motion mm. and so um the, the i think the, the 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 coo refused and said no you know i'm not culpable i'm not going to issue a statement saying that my company is guilty and of an offense that we are not guilty of mm -hmm. after all we don't know where some of those fake fertilizers are coming from what we gave you was a certain number of bags which have been distributed without complaints but then the bags outside they are miraculously increased in number and so those others we are not they are not from us mm. so so he was supposed to i think he was being told to to say that on air so right. he refused mm. and this uh, the cs apparently as, as as it is alleged he he cancelled i think his license and went and shut his his uh, his uh, his factory now that would be abuse of power state power yeah. and that would be a, 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 one, one that of violation grounds. of that mm. would automatically send the cs home mm. but you see the committee says no we cannot invite uh, this uh, this gentleman because the gentleman apparently has uh, been arrested after we we voted to impeach the cs has been arrested and is now facing uh, charges in court mm. and so he said so they said of course that would be subjudice mm. we said you know what we will not allow the discussions to go to the charge sheet mm. in court 
which is about uh, I think purchase and distribution of uh, I think is it um, substandard products and all. Mm. We said we will only refine ourselves to only the part that concerns the CS, yep. which is the issue of the press statement that we were supposed to read, and two, the closure of his factory. That mm. was all we needed. They completely refused mm. and 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 said no you know this is subsidies and you know you cannot control what you say we said you can control him you can tell him not to refer to anything that is in court. in court it is possible because that's the power we have i tell you it was a shame they completely refused and that's why we had to pen our dissenting opinion and we said we we we, we, are, we cannot be party to these deliberations because at the end of the day i mean the committee has been put together for one singular purpose to save the cs and that basically means even if the CS uh, shoots someone down in the streets and the parliament uh, tries to impeach him, they will still do the same. So how would this be done? How, is, how are the members of the committee selected? Now, the, that's now another problem. The, okay, it's supposed to be that uh, uh, the, because it's an 11-member committee, so the majority mm. should have six members mm. and the minority should have five members. Mm. Now, I want to take you back, so in essence, would have been six to five, yep. which, which means if we manage to convince maybe one person who feels that, well, maybe they don't want to sink with this uh, ship, mm. they would have maybe voted with us and would have, would have impeached. Mm. But uh, if you go back a little bit when uh, after the last election, we've had this debate for a long time mm. about um, uh, this issue of members defecting after election. Mm. You are elected, you know, it's fidelity to political parties. You are elected in a Zimio ticket, mm. and tomorrow you start subscribing to Kenya Kwanza. You don't go, get subjected to the public again. Mm. So you continue enjoying the, 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 the vote that you are given through a Zimio, but you are now in Kenya Kwanza. Jubilee Party went to Parliament and said that they have pulled out part of Jubilee because, you know, Jubilee is still split into two. Mm. There is a Jeremy Kioni Jubilee and there is a Sabina Shege Jubilee. Mm. So the Sabina Shage Jubilee in Parliament went and uh, decided that they will, they will stand alone. They are not in uh, Kenya Kwanza, but we know that themselves. they are in Kenya Kwanza, but and they are, neither are they in Azimio. The truth is, they are actually in Kenya Kwanza. They vote with Kenya Kwanza. They do everything with Kenya Kwanza. It's like Waipa. Waipa, we are a par parliamentary party, yeah. but we are in Azimio. Yeah. We don't claim to be an, a parliamentary party because we are part of a coalition. Mm. You know, ODM is also a political party. They don't claim to be a, pol a parliamentary party because they're part of a coalition. Now, what, uh, what uh, Jubilee does, which is strange, is that they claim that they are not in Kenya, Kwanzaa, neither, neither are they, they in Azimio. They're a parliamentary party. By they're a parliamentary party, just <laughs> like UDA is a parliamentary party, WIPA, ODM. But look at uh, any parliamentary group that is called by Kenya, Kwanzaa in State House. All Jubilee members of parliament aligned to Kenya, Kwanzaa will be there. So, by, by, for all intents and purposes, they already crossed. So, if there was to be sharing of slots, you, uh, you believe they are to be given a slot, should have been amongst the six that are for Kenya Kwanzaa. Right. So, all they did is that uh, they gave six to UDA, and then one from our slots. To one of the minorities. One of the minority slots was given was to, Jubilee. To, to, to Jubilee. So, we ended up with four. Ah, so, that's how it was. I mean, already from the beginning, it was already... Uh, the Honorable Robert Mboy is the MP for Kathiani constituency. He is the Deputy Minority Leader in the National Assembly. We've been asking ourselves the question of, you know, oversight, accountability, and how this then is exercised by the House. The MP was one of the 11 members of a committee that was selected to investigate the allegations against the medical interior the cabinet secretary for agriculture we know the outcome of that now we just want to understand so how did we arrive at the decision to say these allegations against the cabinet secretary were unsubstantiated you're telling us the composition of this so one is at six majority five minority but then in the minority in the house jubilee is a minority and then Jubilee were given a slot. But who selects the members of the six and the five? Is that not the leadership in the House? Y yes. Um, the, member, the, the members that will serve in that committee are, are supposed to be, the names are supposed to be given out by the two leaders, the leader of majority mm -hmm. and the leader of ma 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 minority. minority. Mm -hmm. um, and so at the point of giving out the names is when the leader of minority noted that uh, he was being told that he'll be given only four slots and and he raised it he said i mean it doesn't make sense who's telling him the, the speaker so i think the speaker made a decision to give one of the slots of the minority to 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 to, to, to jubilee. jubilee 
and that was i mean that was uh, that was what part of the mistakes in my opinion but why what's the what's what's the wisdom of the speaker in this because uh, so what happens to those who belong to a coalition of independent members of parliament are we saying that they are not represented because i can see maybe the speaker is saying because jubilee is a party in the house and they align themselves with a minority officially then they also ought to be considered when you're creating the list of minority members what about the voice of the independent members or are they not sufficient In incidentally the, the, i think they're about eight or so mm. uh, incidentally the these 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 members even the independent members are, are, are somehow aligned you know you you you, you notice that yep. just uh, like i've said the, the member for migori uh, women rep for migori for example is aligned completely with the with the with azimio mm. um you know uh for all intents and purposes that's a member that's one of our members mm. even when we have our pgs she will come mm. so the house is alive to that fact that there are two sides right you know and uh, so so when 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 jubilee aligns with kenya kwanza it makes no sense for kenya kwanza to end up with the uh, two slots or above in fact three slots more than uh azimio because in essence then it ceases to have the, the because they're supposed to have the ma majority of one yeah they're supposed to have had six mm. the six should have been enough for them they should have made sure these other slots are come to us so that uh, we can share them amongst even if we want to have an independent then my my, my leader the minority leader could have put an independent member who is aligned to us mm. and the majority leader at the same time can also put people in the smaller parties you know mm. they're also other than independence there's also parties that are not parliamentary mm. parties like kanu which mm. has five members it's not a parliamentary party because of the numbers mm. uh, parties like dapk mm. you know there, there are few members so there, there are a lot of small parties parties like pa parties like uh, chap chap they are small small parties but they are aligned they have members pa, chap chap mm. after elections also jumped to kenya kwanza and mm. we we accepted that they are part of kenya kwanza and they basically are on that side now so so for 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 the for the speaker to pick a slot from the minority and give it to a party aligned to kenya kwanza was was also unfair that was mischief number one that, yeah, of, of course you know the the you know a bad day from the morning okay when the list was given and i'll tell you this is what happened because it was in the full glare of media mm. when names were being read of the the, the 11 member committee mm. the house had already said they would reject the list mm. and so the the speaker announced and said you know what if you reject the list and then say we don't form the committee then we've let the cs off the hook mm. and naturally there'll be no further business on this matter so when he said that now it became uh, members realized they are between a rock and a hard place so they had to make a decision and you will notice this when the names were being read out when any name of the seven was read out on the floor of the house members shouted no mm. when our names of the four, four members were, were were named they shouted yes so already members kind of knew that their saving grace is going to be the four members and sure enough <laughs> 10 days later they return a verdict that was already predetermined you know even the jubilee member who, who you would have expected to have maybe uh, been independent and think through for on behalf of the farmers they decided that they all go uh, the same direction mm. and 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 it was it's unfortunate because even those that are so easy to substantiate like the like i just told you an issue like abuse of power which would have easily been substantiated by calling a witness we refuse to call witnesses uh, matters like um, when the CS himself and you're you're saying you're, they said that uh, he's lost public trust because at the beginning remember when this candle broke he yeah. said there is no fake fertilizer There's those are his like words there's yeah. no 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 fertilizer is good go to NPP and CPB you get perfect fertilizer then the deputy president announced uh, pronounced himself on the matter and mm. said well there seems that there is a problem want to apologize to farmers who may have gotten this uh, bad fake fertilizer mm. so immediately after that the CS came out and said you know there is only 3000 bags mm. of fake fatal only 3000 so he's trying to say there is a problem yeah, but he's diminishing the quantity i mean if there are only 3000 how did he know there are only 3000 unless he was involved in uh, in the packaging maybe, <laughs> maybe. so <laughs> cuz he, he said there are only 3000 yeah. and then and then uh what when, when he disparages uh alan namu mm. you know on on, on tv mm -hmm. and says you know this fellow is just a is just a thug a crook some mm. terms he used which which uh, we were also talking about the inconsistency of mm. his communication because you have to there's to got to be public trust yeah remember this is the danger we face 
uh, the, the, the government said that they will not subsidize uh, consumption, they will subsidize production. Yep. And they said the main way by which they've done that is to subsidize a fertilizer. Mm. Now, if we are going to subsidize fertilizer and then we find that the fertilizer is, uh, is, 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 is substandard or not, you know, it's actually fake, basically. It's mm. fake because it's not fertilizer. Mm. What we saw is not fertilizer. So if, if that is the case, then what will happen is that next year or the year after, farmers are going to be questioning the fertilizer coming out of government uh, stores. Mm. So that means they will end up buying from, uh, you know, the, 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 the aggravates yep. at, a at a higher price, which means that the, the subsidy will no longer be beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. I can tell you as a farmer, if I was a farmer, I would be very scared of any fertilizer coming out of NCPB now because you, you don't know when you will be the next lost candle. Trust. So the loss of, lo loss of trust mm. is one of those other uh, parts of the constitution. If you, if you as, a, as a state officer, if there is no public confidence in you, Mm. then obviously the logical thing to do would be probably to step aside. So there's a lot of things we never got to the bottom of. In fact, I can tell you, we just said is unsubstantiated because we did not want it to be substantiated. <laughs> <laughs> you did not seek to substantiate. We didn't want it to be substantiated. So it was very easy to say, no, you know, on this time, uh, we, it was not substantiated. But the person who could have substantiated was not invited. The discussion that would have led us to figure out whether it can be substantiated or not was not allowed. Because we were, I mean, we were haggling all through and fighting all through. Mm. So me, I think the whole process was a sham. Kenyan taxpayers' uh, money was wasted for, for so 10 days. It was set up to fail from the beginning. Obviously. And, and then I'll tell you there is also some things we need to address. Because the member for, for Bumula, the Honorable Jack Wamboka, who brought the motion. Mm. Once the motion passed, it became the property of the house. Yeah. So that's why the house was forming a committee. Jack Wamboka did not form the committee. Mm. His business was done. But now, uh, in the in the in the in the in the in the in he the, was made in to the, be the complainant. Yes, in the pre after that now, in the in the subsequently he told now you know what? You have to organize yourself, put your thoughts together, find witnesses, uh, organize how the witnesses will come to the city, accommodate them, transport them, uh, find a lawyer, pay them, uh, brief them, let wait them Wait a minute. Yes, I can tell you that's what happened. Wait, 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 wait. So when we saw two signs uh, appearing there. Yes. The Honorable Mede Kalinturi had his team of lawyers. Yes. He was a sole witness in his case. Yes. So he paid his lawyers. He I paid his say. lawyers, yes. The House had, um, because the House had accepted this, the yes. House had Jack Wamboka as one witness, uh, witness yes. and then there was that battery of lawyers. Who yes. was paying those lawyers? All those lawyers were paid by Jack, Honorable Jack Wamboka. Why? Why? I, I, that's those are the those are the questions who, we're asking because who, who is it who communicated to him that it is him who oh, should pay? Yes, I think he's he's written. I, the, I can tell you so far what is happening is that uh, he has approached the parliamentary service commission with that uh, with that matter. Uh, he wasn't they didn't support him, but uh, they are coming up with a paper to figure out how to support members. Article one twenty seven of the constitution. Uh, says that the Parliamentary Service uh, Commission is supposed to provide members with the facilities and services to carry out their duties. Yeah. Now, to, 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 to deal with a motion like this is actually one of the facilities and the services that is he, he needed to be facilitated for purposes of carrying out his duty as a member which is to, uh, to, to oversight. And the members of parliament have, their, have actually constitutionally the mandate of being able to, see, uh, to, 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 to impeach a minister. So what, what was shocking is that uh, the honorable member was left on his own. And you saw two of his, uh, his, uh, his um, uh, advocates disappeared in the middle of the day, just before the cross-examination of, uh, you, you know, yes. yes. They, they disappeared, and, the, and, and his, his uh, lead counsel, the, the uh, senior counsel, John Haminua, said it. He said, you know, we, we went for lunch, and these young men were very good. We were together throughout, and uh, I saw them a few minutes ago. Now I can't see them. Uh, their phones are off, and I think it's a security matter. But later on, we, we, we had the young men were very safe somewhere, uh, you know, enjoying themselves, which meant that they were not under any danger. Or yeah. perhaps if if one if one can speculate, they had been spoken to. Well, <laughs> yes. speaking of if being one spoken can, to, if one can, <laughs> if one can speculate. Yes, <laughs> people have said, and one person who has come out to 
directly and openly speak about this is senior counsel of Nasir Abdullahi, mm. who has gone onto social media and said, you know what, there are, and he's alleging that there was exchange of cash to the members of this committee, or at least an approach to members of this committee, approach with cash so that then you can sway your decision. Were you approached? by anybody uh i wouldn't want to go into details mm. um because um not details just yes but, but I, 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 I want to you know i have to I have to set my case first yes okay i wouldn't want to go into details because uh, uh it touches on my colleagues yes nobody beyond my my colleague members talked to me mm. and yes yes it did happen uh on occasion uh, by members that are not in the committee mm. Uh, who asked for a favorable verdict mm. um, with, a, with, a, with a promise there would be a thank you at the end. So never, never, no details. And these are, this is exactly what happened. Mm. So, so you can't even say what exactly the offer was. Okay. Uh, that, you know, you, you save, save, save. But the bottom save line is there be. that there were attempts at reaching out to the 11 members yes, of the committee. Yes, yes. And within the committee, right. I also did get... Uh, um uh, you know I, I was also approached from within the members of the, the committee, committee yes and told that uh, you know uh, there is a there is a plan that uh, the, we can be sorted out in a certain way uh, all we have to do is uh, look the other way so so i would be probably a much richer man if i had not if i had decided to sasa, look the other sasa, way <laughs> Sasa now I would be, I would be, I would be, would, would be living here, going, taking a flight to, to Mombasa for lunch. It's not the first time. Of you. <laughs> it is not the first time, Mishmiwa, that we hear about such things. In fact, yes. I'll tell you, and that's why the reason I asked you: Did you expect anything different from the very beginning, from the moment this matter was approved by the Speaker of the National Assembly? Commentary. Even I made that comment on this show, and I said, "Soko imefunguliwa." Uh -huh. Right? And because well, this, we, we have had this conversation so many times, we've heard it so many times that, you know, this is what happens. That when you see such a matter going, even in the, in, in the Senate, when it's impeachment by committee or impeachment by the whole house, it's okay. So, he soko tunaipanua, ama he soko constrain to the membership of a committee. This is the perception that citizens of this country have of parliament. And the people they elect to parliament yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a very very serious perception and even when we said it here we laugh about it but it's a serious matter no it's a, it's a, it's a serious and it's something matter. That we, we know and when it, when the outcome comes and when um, you hear even members saying yes i was approached i was approached i was approached like okay and it passes Is how it, can we deal with this issue I think I think I want to throw the I want to send this back to, to you know this issue back to sender. Yeah, it is the public that elects members and brings them to Senate, the National Assembly, and all these offices. Mm. And uh, the public have also watched, and they know. I mean, just like you said, I know that uh, there were also uh, members who would be would really have wanted to be in the committee. Because of what you've just alleged. Because of the opportunity. Yes, because of the, op the and you know the thing is, I, I will say this that uh, out of the eleven, four of us clearly, of course, couldn't have touched anything because we had to go. We went eventually against. Mm. So, but but uh, I won't say the others took. I don't know. Mm. But that allegation is not is not unfounded because I was approached. I didn't touch. So I I would also assume that maybe when you say let's not have witnesses who can help us with the case, there must be a motivation. What what is the motivation? You see, that's the thing. The thing I ask myself. So I think when it comes to the general public, when they are also doing the elections, let them also you know maybe look at the kind of people they bring to the house because when the parliament is in disrepute, when the committee of eleven members is in disrepute, it extends to the house. It also reflects on the house because they are not drawn from outside the house. It reflects negatively on the house. And when the house is also in disrepute, remember it reflects on the country because these are representatives of the people. So if the representatives act in a certain way, they can't be acting against what the people are like. So I think this is a big problem and that needs to be addressed. So Kenyans need to figure out. Uh, and the, why the problem comes in is because during elections, you find the people with deeper pockets are likely to win. Yeah. So what does that tell you? That already Sokopia in Efunguliwa are the grassroots. Mm. 
Na I want to I want to be candid because that's a reality. Announce like a gazette the date of the election. Soko imefunguliwa. Yes. And uh, you know so soko imefunguliwa even for the general public. So they wakule where they can. Then after that now the the same fellas now who are out there who are the victims now get into the house. So now they start kurudisha pesa yao. You know you know so, one of the things that the voter cannot do they cannot know what the hidden desires of the elected leaders are mm. when leaders are elected in this country there are many instances where we've had leaders who are elected who don't really have any money to speak of it means the people have decided mm -mm. that is the person with money we know this is the person we also know we feel this is the person who could represent us now there is no measure for what it is or there is no foretelling what it is that good fortune or the effects of good fortune will bring on the mm -hmm. individual we ask that question here uh, with a with a tinge of humor is what air do people breathe when they get into parliament because mm -hmm. we know many people who are genuinely sincere yo kitu you see like in high school the way they put something maftata yes kodiveri <laughs> I can tell I can tell you from my uh, serving my third term my observation is this mm. the public sometimes uh, you know they bring in people of course uh, from all walks uh, all walks and sizes and you know uh, rich people poor people tall people short people everyone and uh, we all congregate there and i think there is also uh, quite a number of people that are fairly wealthy in fact extremely wealthy that yep. are elected to the house yep. so i think what happens is that uh, yep. somebody who comes in and uh, was uh, was a was a head teacher somewhere a principal somewhere who doesn't have much in their pocket uh, is suddenly rubbing shoulders with uh, you know you know extremely rich people yeah and then of course uh, the income the pay, or, or rather the pay is not very small so there's <laughs> this attitude and no more natural tendency for people to also want to go up the ranks and so the minute they go up a little they want to compete now with those that are multi-millionaires who have been uh, you know in the system for long so somebody is a faster member they also want to get rich quick mm. and so tendency is uh, the the tendency the, the ability to be swayed is quite uh, quite high but it's not all of them it's just a few individuals you see who succumb there are also many members who just serve diligently oh they're five years yes, get re-elected or even lose but there are very many members who are also clean the the biggest problem is that uh, you know those that are notorious are the ones that are known more because those that will do crazy things, you know, suddenly you have come from nowhere, you have money, you start flouting it, you go on overseas trips, you are taking photos in the aeroplane, you are taking photos out there, you know, you get now a new girlfriend, you start having her on your shoulder, you are hanging on your arm, you are taking photos, circulating. That's, that's what uh, causes. <laughs> so, so, but it's just a few people. Let me just say, it's, there's a, maybe a very small percentage, maybe 10, 15, maybe 20. But you know something, Mwishimiwa, maybe 10, 20. <laughs> but that's not what we judge our representatives by. It's how they vote. Mm. Because there are very many issues that come into parliament. Yep. Let's take a case in point. We're now going to be looking at the finance bill. Mm -hmm. The ceiling that the executive is, allow is allowed to reach when in terms of borrowing. That decision rests with the parliament. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the onerous task of paying back our taxes, paying back our debts, and the percentage of our GDP that actually or our revenue that goes to paying taxes, we laid at the foot of parliament, but you are the people who gave these people this ceiling. Mm. We don't see uh, ample evidence of where we said, okay, ceiling, we don't, that we understand, we also live here. But can you tell us what you did with what we gave you before? Now, it may be asked once or twice, mm. but we do not see parliament vigorously holding the executive to account. That's what they're supposed to do. It is said, and it's in the public domain, that people feel in this country that parliament is like an extension of the executive. Now, there are those voices that dissent. Sometimes we hear them like in this instance, we've heard it very clearly and very loudly. Mm. The other instances, we don't even hear a whimper. 
And no, in, no I, 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 I would love to see to hear a situation where there was no whimper when the gov when the, the executive was doing its successes. We have always we have always held them to account. The problem is uh, we will we will we will shout, but the shouting from the other side is so loud that we sound like a whimper. See what mm. you're doing That's now. a problem. See what you're doing now. Mm. You're shouting. <laughs> you see, what you say in the parliament and telling us to read the Hansard, I'm not going to read the Hansard. <laughs> Why should I read the Hansard? What for? Oh, so, so we, sh we need to get it uh, to that get out. That is the point. If these people are loud, why don't you also become loud? You see, the only way you will be judged by the public is if they can see, if they can hear. That's and they'll say, okay, they were defeated, but man, they put up a valiant fight. That's why I use the word whimper, because you barely hear it. Barely hear it means that when you look at us in the middle of the fourth estate, it will be full of what, as you say, the other side is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, unless you're saying that those who are in the opposition bring their issues and we ignore it completely. I don't think that is the case. The fourth estate doesn't actually do that. Yeah, if you, I agree with you. Yes. If you, if you come with your issue, you'll be given an equal footing. But if you don't come, or if we ask you to come and you don't come, then what do we do? Well, that means we need to shout more, uh, which we shout. Louder. And we shout louder. Yes. We will. We will keep shouting louder. Yes. Yeah, because if we don't, uh, incidentally, the, the, way, the way the country, where, it, where we are headed, eh, is, is a very difficult place. I mean, you, you've heard of the new finance bill being proposed. They, they've forgotten that we have, not even, we have not even healed from the wounds that have been inflicted by the 2023 one in fact we have not even fully implemented 2023 finance bill mm. we are still grappling with it and struggling with it then they've brought another one let me ask you a simple uh, question mm. Mishmira. you've been in parliament now and you understand your colleagues is it really in our dna as kenyans never to deny or refuse to take a bribe because it, it appears many of our problems when it comes to parliament there's always the mention of conversations in toilets mm -hmm. brown envelopes sometimes it's white envelopes is it possible for people to actually say look there's a larger picture here and it's actually in our interest to look at it because it seems like the need to cater for whatever immediate purpose somebody has seems to take center stage yeah well i guess that's true uh, but you know i'll tell you this there's a time when kibaki was president he attempted to solve this problem also part of the the the, the craving for money mm. is also pressure from the public and mm. you know, it's important to say this and mm. a few can say that i, mm. I am one of those few mm. that uh, the general public as it is in this country when it comes to uh, people that are in elective position, yep. the understanding of the job description of this elected person is very different from what the Constitution has, re has given us. Because the, the, my role in the Constitution is to represent the people. Uh, so if they have any issues, I speak on their behalf. Mm. Uh, is to oversight the executive. So I make sure that if a CS is, uh, is, is over overseeing a ministry that is messing up the farmers, I, 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 I vote hold to him to account. I hold him to account. Mm. Um, again, uh, also to make laws um, so that uh, if uh, they, there, is, there is a law that is not, uh, you know, neat, we can amend it. If there is a law required to, to, to deal with a certain aspect of uh, uh, governance, we also introduce those. So basically, those are the three roles. And then generally, as, as parliament, we deal with matters of concern to the mm. general public, to mm. the people. But you see now, um, when you go back to the public, now the public believe that when they are sick and they have a big bill, the you. member of parliament and the MCA and the governor and the senator and the women rep, have to pay a role have to play a role yeah so if they have a harambe for medical they need you to support oh. if they have a harambe for, for for fees they need you to support so you remember what kibaki did even the churches want to build it, it, it doesn't matter whether you're catholic mm. if uh, if there is a if there is a as sda church in your constituency they'll you want know. you there mm. not even to send money they'll want you there in person yeah you are a catholic you don't subscribe to that but you have to be there so anyway I think that, that we need to find a way by which uh, maybe maybe strengthen that 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 law that uh, prohibits uh, sitting members 
from participating in Harambe. Harambe yes. So that the pressure to look for money uh, in brown envelopes, white envelopes, in toilets, as you've said, and when you're in committees, then 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 reduces. Because you're basically what you're doing in Parliament in the corridors of Parliament is your fundraising to go and take to go and fundraise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mashmua, always a pleasure having you here. Uh, in this budget-making cycle, we'll invite you again uh, right, to discuss the finance bill, to discuss the appropriations, I mean the budget estimates. Robert Moy, Member of Parliament, Kathiani, Deputy Minority Leader in the National Assembly. Thank you for tuning in to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day.